Hi everyone, my name is Allison Johnson, and this video will be about figure 22 and 23 from chapter 16 of Molecular Biology by Robert Weaver, and this is for MCDB 427 at the University of Michigan. So before we go over the figure, let's discuss the background of the paper. While cells need iron to perform a variety of functions, high concentrations of iron can be toxic to the cell. So mammalian cells regulate iron concentration by regulating amounts of two proteins. One, an iron storage protein called ferritin, and an iron import protein called the transferrin receptor, or TFR. This video will focus on the regulation of TFR, and this happens through post-transcriptional regulation of the TFR mRNA. So let's take a look at this TFR mRNA that needs to be regulated. The cell is going to regulate the mRNA, the 3' UTR, which contains an important feature called the iron response element, or IRE. The IRV, which is the stem loop structure shown here, contains RNA's cleavage sites, so if the IRE isn't protected, the mRNA is susceptible to degradation by RNAs naturally present in the cell. In iron-poor conditions, the cell needs to be producing more TFR, and thus the mRNA needs to be stable and protected from degradation. A protein called aconitase, shown in reddish-orange here, naturally binds to the IRE under these conditions. The aconitase acts as a kind of shield, protecting the IRE from attack by the RNAs. Now the mRNA is happy and healthy and can go on to be translated into TFR. In iron-rich conditions, the cell needs to be producing less TFR, and thus the mRNA needs to be degraded. When iron levels are high enough, iron will bind to the aconitase protein and this will cause a conformational change that will remove the econotase from the IRE, leaving it susceptible to RNAs attack and leading to mRNA degradation, causing less TFR to be produced. Now this model was proposed after the following experiment was done, and the experiment by itself supports the model but does not completely prove it. Further experiments, however, show that the model is correct. So the goal of Harford and his colleagues in this experiment was to analyze relative amounts of TFR biosynthesis under varying conditions and also to, to determine the rapid turnover determinant, which is the region of mRNA responsible for its own instability. The experimenters created several different mutants of human TFR by removing or modifying different IRVs in the constructs. In the first mutant construct, TRS1, IRVs A and E, as well as the central stem loop, were removed. In TRS3, the central loop and all IRVs were removed. And in the final construct, TRS4, the central loop was again removed, but this time a single, highly conserved cytosine was deleted from the end of IRVs B, C, and D. So they transfected these constructs into mouse fibroblast cells and treated the cells with either hemin or desferioxamine. A fourth group with no transfection served as a control to detect possible nonspecific binding of the antibody, which we'll talk about later, and was also a control to measure, measure basal levels of TFR synthesis in these cells. Hemin, which is similar to heme, contains iron and creates an iron-rich environment when added to the cell. On the other hand, desferioxamine is an iron chelator, so it's going to bind tightly to iron, creating an iron-poor environment when added to the cell. Think of desferioxamine as a sponge that soaks up the iron in the cell and makes it unavailable for the cell to use. Manipulation of these two molecules will allow the researchers to regulate iron levels in this experiment. The researchers then assayed for TFR synthesis via an immunoprecipitation and an SDS page. Recall that immunoprecipitations make use of antibodies that bind to the protein of interest, which in this case is TFR, and the SDS page separates proteins by size. The top row indicates which construct was transfected, the second row indicates whether hemin or desferioxamine was added, and the, f the last row indicates the percent regulation, which is expression with desferioxamine over expression with hemin. 
Because the desferiaximine group shows a much thicker band than the heman group, lane 1 tells us that iron has a relatively strong regulatory effect on the synthesis of TFR when construct TRS1 is transfected. Lane 2 shows relatively high expression of TFR and negligible percent regulation with TRS3, whereas in lane 3, we see relatively low expression and again negligible percent regulation. This tells us that the presence of IREs decreases TFR expression and that the conserved C region plays a role of, in TFR expression. Finally, in lane 4, we see no TFR expression without the addition of a construct. This fourth control lane tells us that TFR is not already synthesized in the fibroblast cell without the transfection of the TFR gene and that the antibody used in the immunoprecipitation does not bind nonspecifically. So, when IREs are removed, as they are in TRS3, more TFR is produced. This suggests that mRNA is more stable when the IREs are removed, which leads us to conclude that the rapid turnover determinant most likely lies on the IRE. Also, the only time we see a significant difference in TFR expression between the human and desferioxamine groups is with TRS1, indicating that iron regulation heavily involves the IRE. Finally, TRS4 shows little TFR expression, indicating that the conserved C plays an important role in TFR expression. These are some of the most important takeaways of this experiment. So I hope this video helped and thanks for watching.